Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know who I am, I go by Kaki and we're back with a reading for the week. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, jump right into it. Um, just do keep in mind, take what resonates and leave the rest, get in where you fit in, and let's get right into it. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, cleanse and clear the energies from the cards and um, you can take this time to go ahead and set your intention as well as um, take a couple of deep breaths. And as I was taking some deep breaths before this, I heard watch out and let go. I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but um, that is what came through. And yeah, like I said, as I'm shuffling these, you guys are more than welcome to set your intentions um, and or take some deep breaths and let's get into it. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you for everything that you do for me and the collective. Thank you for all of the blessings, the protection. Please cleanse and clear the energy from these cards so that we may receive the messages that we need the most at this very moment. Um, for our highest good and the highest good of those around us. Okay. So I have the lovers. And then there was another card that wanted to come out here. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. The page of wands in reverse. Any other messages that we need to... There we go. This is the five of wands in reverse. And I'm feeling like we should put one more from this deck and then I probably will grab another deck. Any other messages you would like for us to hear for this week? Messages for the collective for this week. Ace of Cups. This um, kept popping back up, so it definitely was meant to come up. All right, so we have the Lovers, the Page of Wands in reverse, the Five of Swords in reverse, and the Ace of Cups in reverse. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my Mystic Monday's Tarot. Please cleanse and clear the energy from these cards so that we may receive the messages that are in our highest good and the highest good of those around us. What are the things that we should be looking out for this week? What are the themes for this? Any other messages? Thank you guys for tuning in. Any other messages that the collective needs to hear at this very moment? There we go. And I'm gonna take one more from this deck. Four, five, six. Any other messages for the collective? That was too many. One card, please. Or two. That works too. Moon and the High Priestess. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys these before I move forward. I have the Five of Wands. Hello, hello. In reverse, the King of Wands in reverse, the Moon, and then the High Priestess. We're gonna get right into these messages and then I'll go ahead and pull some um, some advice. So again, these are the messages for the week, things that you should be looking out for, things that um, may pop up. And again, remember this is a collective reading, so not everything may apply to you um, since we are tapping into various energies. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. We're going to go ahead and start off with the first cards that I pulled. And the very first one was the lovers. It did come out sideways. When I pulled it, it was upright, but um, I'm going to go ahead and read both the upside and the reverse side. And again, take what, what applies. So here we have two crows, a heart, 
and then you can see this is a reflection of each other. So the keywords are love, business partnership, choices, and relationships. The air element is air. On the surface, this card represents love and unity. However, it goes deeper as it also describes karmic passion and soul relationship that spans lifetimes. The crows have traveled together through space and time. Drinking from the same heart binds them as their veins fill with the same life force, joining their spirits for eternity. Together, each decision is made as the outcome will forever affect them both. From the person you love to the place that you settle down, this card asks you to examine your belief system and your and use your inner compass when deciding to join forces. And again, this doesn't necessarily have to apply to just relationships. This can apply to also um, business partnerships, um, other types of relationships. The lovers brings the message that some benefits and consequences will eventually reveal themselves for better or for worse. The lovers reverse may tell, and then um, again, I'm gonna go ahead and do the reverse since it did come out sideways. The lover's reverse may tell of an imbalance in a relationship. As a result, you may discover that you are not being honest with yourself about the reasoning behind your decision. Take the time to check in, meditate, and examine your choices. Um, so already, I see why this came out sideways. Um, so upright, it talks about you know coming into unity with somebody or something, and um, it does ask us to examine our belief systems and um, look within before making any choices. And if you've already are already in a place where you've already come into union with somebody, again, doesn't have to be in a relationship sense necessarily. Um, there may be an imbalance in the relationship. And so basically this is just telling us to go inward, reevaluate uh, the relationships that we have around us or and or relationships, partnerships that we are um, going into. And then we have the Page of Wands in reverse. When the Page of Wands wand appears reverse, it may indicate a project that is stuck or can't get off the crown because of unforeseen complications. You may simply have lost interest. Upright, the Page of Wands represents a kind-hearted person. Reverse, the Page of Wands may enter your life as an aggressive, immature bully. So I can see the connection with what we just spoke about with the lovers and the Page of Wands here. We were just talking about reevaluating relationships around us or things we are coming into union with. Um, so just, again, be mindful of the people that are around you in your life, but also it might come up more this week, especially, again, um, we are in Mer Mercury. Well, Mercury is retrograde, but we are also in retrograde season still. Hence, there's a lot of reevaluation, a lot of um, a lot of things coming up for us to see in regards to our relationships with other people. And then I have the page, I'm sorry, the five of swords in reverse. So the Five of Swords talks about um, the victorious, and I'm sorry, this is upside, this is reverse. So this is um, indicating that you are tired of fighting and you have accepted that some gains are not worth the battle. And again, this goes back to the theme, right? Where we're re-evaluating and looking at the relationships that we have around us. So all of this is connected and um, yeah, the energies for this week are more so just looking to see, as I mentioned before, reevaluate who you have around you, 
Um, people you're coming into unity with, um, again, doesn't have to be in regards to just relationship love wise it can be also business partnerships be discerning and mindful and then we have the ace of cups in reverse ace of cups Thank you guys for being so patient with me. I feel like every time I do this, it's like I'm doing it for the very first time. <laughs> okay. So this is in reverse. When the Ace of Cups appears reverse, it is it may signal a time for you to curb your emotions. Doing so will enable you to see a situation revealing the best path forward. It may also suggest that you have repressed your feelings for too long and have become cold or distant. Um, so be mindful of, yeah, just becoming, don't let this world make you cold um, or let people get to you and lose faith and hope. And this again relates back to everything else that we just talked about during this week, um, looking at relationships around you and if, you realize that there are partnerships that are no longer serving you or serving either of your highest good. Um, there's no there's no reason to be holding on to them anymore. It's time to as we as I told you guys earlier during um, right before I meditated, right before I jumped into this and meditated. I heard let go and this does talk about um, sealing, sorry, seeing a situation for what it is and um, seeing how to best move forward. And also don't, if there are a lot of, if there are things or feelings that you have been repressing um, not letting yourself feel it's time for you guys to let that out um feel it to heal it otherwise i always say this and i'm never going to stop saying this but whatever you guys whatever emotions or feelings you put in the back burner or you push aside or you don't deal with all that it is going to do is just going to manifest as dis-ease dis-ease disease pain in the body, um, other different kinds of things. <laughs> but all right, so let's go ahead and so, so far, as we mentioned, um, just reevaluate situations, partnerships around you this week and during this, um, this season. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the next ones. We have the five of wands in reverse. And I'll bring it up so that you guys can see it. Uh, I'm laughing because this has to do with everything we just spoke about. So the energy this week is already really clear. Um, but yeah, avoiding conflict, compromise, and truth. So conflict is uncomfortable. However, running away from your problems will not solve anything. What did I just tell you guys? Running away from your problems, from your feelings, from things that you need to go through, it's not going to solve the problem. It's just going to push it back further and it's just gonna keep coming back resistance is persistence um but um anyways nipping it in the bud can help you practice confronting the issues head on instead of shying away in the act of avoidance you tend to scatter your energy and prolong the conflict making it even worse i just said that <laughs> um this could also be a part pattern of compromising your values to appease others 
You may be feeling competitive vibes, especially from your coworkers. Listen to your gut instincts on who you can trust as some, as some people will not have your best interests at heart. Learn to choose your battles and if it is worth fighting for. Reserve your energy for bigger battles ahead and come to a truce to ease the situation. Sometimes keeping the peace is more worthwhile than being right. And once again, this goes back to the Ace of Cups. We were just talking about reevaluating situations, partnerships, and knowing when it's time to move forward and just keep it pushing. Sometimes some things are just not worth your time and energy, um, as you can see here. And then we have the King of Wands. It is also in reverse. So there's a lot of conflict energy, um, a lot of reevaluation, as I mentioned, friction. So this says controlling and aggressive behavior can make for an oppressive experience with the King of Wands reverse. There is an attitude of my way or the highway. And it can create distrust when people feel they haven't been seen or listened to. Passion is fueled by a fear instead of inspiration, and that can lead to jumpy and impulsive decision making. The King of Wands reverse warns you of taking people for granted in the pursuit of your goals. Manipulation and intimidation can be used to serve his agenda with no intention of returning any favors. Expectations are set too high and you are struggling to live up to these standards. Look at the big picture and see that maintaining healthy relationships is also part of your vision. Evaluate your goals and what is more important to you. Beware of doing things out of fear versus inspiration. Um, again, this also talks about involving other people and we talked about reevaluating relationships but also be mindful of how you are connecting with other people in the sense that um is it you don't want to be taking more than what is being given to you so there always has to be a balance with everything right and so just be mindful not to be, be mindful of also nurturing the relationships that are nurturing you as well. And then we have the moon in reverse. I'm sorry, it's not in reverse, <laughs> it's upright. Um, this, the keywords are surreal, subconscious, and shadow self. Abstract and surreal, the moon eliminates, illuminates, eliminates, illuminates our shadow selves, the parts of us that are ruled by the subconscious. They are brought to light by our dreams and fears, often projecting insecurities onto the people and scenarios in our lives. The more aware we become of our unconscious, the more we are able to identify whether we are acting from irrational thoughts or our conscious mind. Go beyond the surface, surface and dive deep to resolve your inner issues. Your intuition will guide you even when it doesn't seem to make any sense. Psychic forces are at play with illusions unraveling to reveal the truth. It can be hard to decipher between what is real and what is imagination, but it is all connected. Play Wow, words today. I'm going to blame that on Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Pay close attention to your dreams and listen to your gut instincts. Your weaknesses are also your best strengths. So again, speaking about Mercury retrograde, since we are in Mercury retrograde, there's a lot of things that are coming up to, um, coming up from our unconscious and just things coming up to the surface, including our shadow self. Um, so again, Go inward, reevaluate, 
not only the relationships around you, but also your shadow aspects and things that are coming up to trigger you um, and just finding the root of those things so that you can bring in more clarity. And we have the high priestess in reverse. The High Priestess in Reverse talks about reconnecting, ne reconnect, neglect, and secrets. Imbalance in the masculine feminine essence of your soul is causing you to second guess yourself and your decisions. This disconnect between you and your inner voice brings perpetual distractions, a constant buzz that is numbing your intuitive powers. Take time to sit still, to be still with yourself so that you can get in tune with your innate wisdom. She's trying to talk to you, but you are straight up ignoring her with the excuse of quote unquote being too busy looking towards external sources for your answers will only circle you back to where you started the high priestess reverse is a sign that to get in touch with your higher self make space to enjoy yourself by doing absolutely nothing you deserve it the intuition that you innately possess will give you all the answers that you need but only if you allow it to okay we talked about our shadows things coming up to the surface going inward and this is just reminding us again to take time to reflect on things and go inward this week and during this um retrograde season especially during this mercury retrograde as well i'm gonna go ahead and pull for um advice and yeah and i'll wrap it up I will go ahead and be posting this on YouTube so that if you missed the front, or not the front, if you missed the beginning of it, you can go back and watch it if you feel called to do so. Um, other than that, let's get right into the advice. So I'm going to be using my Moonology Oracle cards. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Universe. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for all the protection and blessings. Please clear the energy in these cards. So that we may receive, like we, we got one card, which is funny. So that we may receive the uh, messages that we need to hear at this very moment. And it's, of course, a time, a time for healing. And it's balsamic moon. Um, literally, this is how we were ending the reading. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of purple and blue in these last cards that talks about intuition, talks about going inward connecting with yourself activating your third eye and your crown chakra and just again a time for healing this is not really the time to be pushing forward um starting new projects it's not to say that you can't but since it is as i mentioned since we are in this energy of slowing down looking within taking time to reevaluate everything that's that's going on and that's happening around us um it's okay to be able to slow down to take a step back and i'll go ahead and actually um read the message for this as well and then we can go ahead and pull one more card and we will be wrapping it up after that um so it says a time for healing and this is again balsamic moon And I just passed it. Okay. Pulling this card suggests that the past is in the past. When we first started this reading, I did say that one of the messages that was coming through was letting go. Let go. And it's, again, coming back up right now. Um, the past is in the past and a bright future is beckoning however before you take your next step make sure that both you and the situation feel healed again going within this is not the time to paper over tracks or to simply pretend that everything is okay which is what we talked about in the ace of cups remember um emotions being repressed or pushed back instead of feeling them
Rather, you still need to take a little more time to heal and to soothe both yourself and anyone else in need. Then remind yourself that anything is possible if you believe it. This is also a time to surrender and to wait to hear guidance from the universe. Powerful insights. Again, sitting. <laughs> Sorry. Sitting alone with yourself. Taking time to integrate these energies. Uh, powerful insights can be had. If you know that someone or something is something really isn't good for you, this card is a reminder to surrender. Start to work on your belief in your dreams so you're ready when the time comes. I think this wraps up pretty much perfectly everything we just talked about. Um, yeah. <laughs> when one is healed, all are healed. It's time to let go of the past. You are about to turn the corner. You need more time to heal. Think about how the situation would look if everyone were healed. Patience is required at the time of the balsamic moon. It's a time for self-care as you slowly but surely prepare yourself for the new moon. There is actually, if I'm not mistaken, there's a new moon that is going to be coming up soon. So I'm not surprised that that's coming up on, on here as well. Um, but which is just around the corner. No matter which point in the current moon cycle you have pulled this card, it's a remember, reminder to go a little bit easy on yourself. The time to step into your creative into your creative power will come soon enough. Give yourself the time you need. Wow. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. We are going to pull just one more card. Um, but I think that, that some everything we just talked about really well um again we talked about just to wrap it up right we talked about reevaluating situations people around us partnerships things you're coming into unity with being mindful of those around you um feeling your emotions not letting things stay Um, how do I, sorry, let me, let me ref, my, my brain is working faster than my mouth is. Um, wow, I, my brain just uh, went blank there for a moment. Oh yeah, this is, this was talking about emotions and feeling your emotions. And um, then we jumped into the next couple of cards that, again, just tied in with everything else that we talked about partnerships, uh, slowing down, reevaluating not only people around you, but also yourself, um, taking time to go within, taking time to slow down. And like I said, this wraps it up really well. It's a time to heal, a time for healing. I think that's a beautiful message. Um, yeah, guys, just take time to reevaluate everything around you, your relationships, um, yourself, take, take some time to sit alone, to go inward, take some time to heal any triggers, any wounds, any feelings, anything that is coming up to the surface for you to look at during this retrograde. Um, and I literally was just talking to my mom earlier about just being, <laughs> I'm getting tingles, about just being kinder and more compassionate with yourself. And that ties in with that, this very last message as well, um, as it talks about going easier on yourself. And then I'm gonna pull from the Enlightenment After Self War, and we'll wrap it up with this message. Please cleanse and clear the energies in this card, in these cards, so that we may receive the messages that are in our highest good and the highest good of those around us. What is the final message for the collective? What is the final message for the collective? Final message for the collective. These are so hard to shuffle. <laughs> Silence. Time for healing. We were just talking about taking time to sit with yourself, taking time to go inward. 
Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and read this and then we'll, we will wrap it up. The breath is the essence of our life. Without air, we could not breathe. The sacredness of breath is reflective in the sacredness of the words we choose to speak or the silence we choose to keep. This may be a time for you to honor the sacredness of silence. We live in times now where silence has been used as a weapon of oppressors to keep people quiet on matters they want to keep unexposed. This is not that kind of silence. This silence is the meditation of your breath, the beating of your heart, the great opportunity of thinking before you speak, which ties in again with Mercury retrograde and communication issues. So before you speak things out loud, think about what you're about to say, especially around this time. At the time of intentional silence, I'm sorry, a time of intentional silence makes the next words you say even stronger. You're asked to choose your words wisely right now as they bear a great influence on your own mental state and your world. So the things that you tell yourself in your head also matter. They are a stone dropped in calm waters, rippling itself across the vastness of your inner ocean. In matters where your words have caused destruction or drama, this may also be a message from the universe and your ancestors telling you to lock your lips. I think that that was a beautiful message. Um, everything tied in with each other. And yeah, just be very mindful, um, especially during the season think before you speak um it is a time to just go inward take some time for yourself reevaluate re what is it that you want to do where is it that you want to go take time to slow down and just like take inventor inventory this we have this this moment this pause this time to slow down so that when this new moon that is coming up, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that, um, we have room for new things. We're able to set new intentions, new goals, um, and just step into new opportunities. Um, so yeah, again, let it go. If there are things that are just not working, um, after you or reevaluate your partnerships and your relationships if you notice that it's just not in alignment with you anymore I know it's not easy to let things go but um, whether it's people places things beliefs thoughts um, in order to make I always say in order to make room for the new you have to let go of things that are no longer in alignment with you but Thank you so much for tuning into these messages. Thank you guys for joining me. I will be posting this on my YouTube. Um, that way, again, if you didn't, you weren't here from the beginning, you're able to go back and um, look at the messages if you feel called to do so. Um, as well as if you did stick around, then you can go ahead and go back and just um, listen to things over again. Uh, I hope that this helps at least one person out there. And you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you.